Hello. Um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but it's been like two years. I think I started working on Domus in 2020, uh, early 2020. And I kind of feel like an old man. Like, I don't know, I just feel like, I mean, I still have like NIP04, uh, like DMs in my client. You know, there's a lot of crazy cool stuff happening. And I started thinking like, wow, like, I feel like I'm so out of date with like the latest technology in Noster and just things are moving at a, such an insanely accelerated rate in this space that even me, like I spend every day like looking at NIPs, um, just the, the markdown version of that, yeah. Uh, that it's like, I still miss so much stuff. And uh, so I decided to go in, um, I think this was the first proposed talk on the Nostriga GitHub repo. Uh, but then after this, there's been like, what, five or six, you know, talks on private, like DM technology. And so I'm really glad that, you know, we got this kick started and we're talking about this now, even though it's been, it's only been like two years or so, like since we started Noster. And, um, but it's, pre it's a pretty important topic because as I'll get into, you know, privacy is pretty fundamental. You can't have free speech without, without privacy. So <clears throat> let's get into it. Um, this is me. Uh, I work on protocol stuff. Uh, I was been working on Bitcoin Core, um, not developing on Bitcoin Core in 2010, but I, oh, Jesus, how did I break this already? You can see my calendar. What happened? Oh. There we go. Um, <clears throat> I've been working on Lightning very early. I'm kind of a, a protocol hipster in some sense. I'm starting to work on Arc now. I think it's kind of cool. Um, shout out to Steven Roos. Uh, and yeah, Noster Dev. So let's jump into private Noster. Uh, I really wanted to just do a, a kind of like a high level overview of kind of the latest privacy technology. I didn't want to, I'm not going to jump into NIPs on this panel, uh, on this discussion. There's been a lot of people, there's been a lot of discussions on this. The Jeff G did a really good one that dove into some of these things, but I'm going to give a high level about kind of the current privacy issues on Noster. <clears throat> can we even make Noster more private? Is that something we want to do? Is that something we can even do? Um, what does a private Noster look like? Um, like, what does it mean? Does it, just, does it just mean more DM, like more DM types? Or like, can we make all of Noster private? Oh. Um, and is, Noster, is private Noster even possible? <clears throat> so let's jump into it. Noster, I really like uh, Rabble's description of his little tagline, the social app protocol, because it truly underpins a very important aspect of the protocol, which is this social graph layer. And it enables lots of kind of unique and cool things. Um, and one of these, and one of the properties of the Nostra protocol is how open it is. Um, openness is awesome. I truly believe that the reason why developers um, find it so easy to, to build interoperable apps in the first place is because the data is there. You can see it. You can pull it down. Um, if some client is doing something weird, you'd be like, oh, okay, I guess I'll adapt my client to that weird thing you're doing. Um, so openness is like a really important property, and we want to keep it, um, keep that property there. Uh, but it's kind of um, openness has a few issues. Um, so here's a little visualization of something I've been working on lately in Note Deck. Um, I've been playing with like visualization of kind of my social graph and things that are in the local database. And it's truly m mind blowing how much data that's just in your phone. Um, and you don't really know, you don't really think about it because there's, we don't have really good tools for visualizing it, but there is so much data and all that data um, is in some sense, it's tracking the activity of the users. So all of these individuals who are all communic communicating with each other, uh, with NIP04 specifically, you can log into their account and just start seeing all the people they've talked to. You can't see the contents of the message, um, but it's still very concerning. And, uh, and this is actually a huge issue when pr people first join Domus and they learn about this and they immediately leave because they're like, oh, this is really creepy. Um, and it's because it's such a rare thing. It's not something that's, people don't expect that on a modern um, social app these days. It's um, <clears throat> and... Yeah, so even when the content is scripted, it still exposes lots of metadata. <clears throat> so <laughs> thank you, Vanessa, for like, I was writing these slides, and I'm like, I was like, oh, metadata, metadata. She's like, what are you talking about? Like, what, it, like, what is metadata? Like, what does that mean? I'm like, oh, right. So thank you for grounding me back in uh, normie land and reality. So I'm going to explain quickly, just define what metadata is. So metadata is the, is the auxiliary information that kind of, it's uh, attached to the main content of the message. So in the, in the case of a letter, it might be, yeah, the actual contents of this envelope, which is like the actual letter. You might not be able to read the letter, but you can still see some metadata about the, about the, the letter, such as who it's from, who it's to. Um, and it, 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 the main thing it does is associate who is talking to who, who is talking to who. Um, so why, is that a bad thing? Like, why should you be concerned about that? 
Uh, the dangers of metadata. <laughs> Ex-NSA chief uh, Michael Hayden, you know, famously said, we kill people based on metadata. So obviously if you're sending a DM, you don't want to get drone striked. So uh, we try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, uh, if, if you're an activist uh, fighting corruption in some corrupt regime, the threat of detention for associating with certain groups is a real threat and that's like a real concern. Um, and I've, especially since I've been experiencing going to a lot more HRF events, I didn't realize how common this is still an issue across the world. Like we're very fortunate that we don't have to deal with these issues, but a large majority of the world that we're building this technology for still has this issue and we want to make sure that, you know, they're, they're not going to be thrown in jail for just sending a, a shit post or something, you know? Um, so that's really important. <clears throat> and uh, maybe more day-to-day -day realistic thing, um, you could get caught by your partner chatting up your ex. Uh, don't do that. But, you know, that's people like <laughs> something you have to worry about. Like, this is something that's real, real people have these issues. So, so what's, the what's the current state of metadata on legacy social media today? Um, so, there's still metadata, but it's kind of hidden from you. So, employees can see the metadata, um, they have access to the database. Um, and a lot of the time, they can even see the contents of your messages. If you're sending a message on Instagram, um, someone within that company who they could go into your DMs and look at it because you know they have no incentive to encrypt your information. We at least started with encrypted DMs at the start, which is it just is sane. But surprisingly, the majority of social media still doesn't have that property. Um, and even if you trust them not to read your DMs, data leaks still happen all the time. Um, re recently, hackers leaked 1.1 terabytes of Disney's internal Slack chat. So if you're a company, you got to worry about internal leaks and all these things. So the situation is not great even on legacy social media, but like. We should still be a lot better than that still because we want to build the future of communication protocols that's decentralized. <clears throat> so what can we do? So some initial ideas that were first thrown around on this idea was, you know, the first thing I thought of was like, okay, well, you just have a private relay. You auth to that relay, which means that the relay is like, okay, I, I know who you are. I'm going to serve you the notes and only you can read the notes or only, only the whitelisted people can read the notes. And this is actually pretty simple. I like it. You know, if you're running an internal, like, Slack for your company, you can just keep your notes private and only allow people to read them. Uh, but it still has a, a, a huge issue in the sense of um, if someone's on that relay, they can still broadcast it to the public network. Um, and that is a property where you, does not, it's not good. <laughs> you don't want that because if you have a disgruntled, disgruntled employee, they can just broadcast things to the network. And so we're trying to avoid that situation as well. <clears throat> this little fancy thing is called a protected event. Um, and this is, came out of the you know, genius mind of Fiat Jaff of just adding a dash to the tag and that's just gonna solve all our issues. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, it's simple. It, it, I added this to the Domus Relay, so if you add that tag to your note, Domus will, the Domus Relay will reject it. And the main point of it is to give some agency back to the user what, how, um, how notes appear on certain relays. So we're, we're trying to get all the relays to implement that. So, um, and, if you, and if you build a custom relay, you can handle that specifically to, to allow it in certain situations. So, you know, it's simple, but you still have the issue where anyone can broadcast a note. So what do we really want? Um, you know, S Signal kind of s took this problem very seriously. Um, and there's certain properties of the Signal protocol and the Simplex protocol that are very important. Um, the big one is post-compromise security, which is if you leak your key, which you probably do because you're an idiot and you store it in notes, um, <laughs> then you don't want to have all your conversation history uh, leaked. I've, I mean, I, I say idiot because I'm an idiot and I've done this in the past. I've posted my private key on Noster, and because I thought it was a public key, because back then we had hex keys, and that's how NSEX and NPUB came to be, because I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that again. So, <laughs> so now when you paste your NSEC and Domus, it'll actually just paste your NPUB instead, so it will protect you. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, so the post-compromise security is important, but also forward secrecy, um, so that like people can't just harvest your data and then decrypt it later. <clears throat> so the big question is, can we do just as good on Noster? Is it possible? Um, this is the question I, was, I, I asked myself and I was really interested in exploring this idea. Um, the f so a big part of this is the metadata security. So one thing that I think Veter came up with it, maybe Hoddlebod was contributing as well, but this idea of GIF wraps, which is a very simple idea. And, I, and I, it's, I, I think it's a very simple idea, but I don't think it's explained very well. So I think this slide should at least clear it up for everyone. Um, so you can imagine you're sending uh, a message to Veter and uh, there's nothing else associated. There's, you don't know who it's from, it's just a random key that generated the note. But inside the note is a seal. <clears throat> so it actually has my signature on it, only Veter could read that. Um, but it's still another envelope you have to unwrap. Uh, 
uh, which is a note to, it's a private note to, to Vitor. <laughs> Uh, but the important thing about this internally, so, so we, again, the, uh, on the outside we got the gift wrap, then we have the seal, which is, has my signature on it, and then the internal thing is called the rumor. So the important thing, the reason why we do this is because the rumor does not have a signature on it, so you can't broadcast it to the network, which is actually really, really important because um, I want to send him these messages, but I don't want him to like, just broadcast it to say that I actually did that. There's no way for them, him to do that on the protocol. So that's a really cool tool. The only downside is that gift wraps... Um, they're really just one to one. You can only send like one to someone and has some like spam issues because and it's like a DOS vector in some situations if you're sending people lots of gift wraps and they got to like decrypt them. But I don't think that's a, it's that big of an issue. I think, you know, Domus will probably have NIP 17 DM gift wraps um, soon. So here's an example. So you have all these issues with metadata, but with gift, gift wraps for DMs, NIP 17, this issue just goes away. So that's, we're already making progress. Uh, but, we want more. Like we want we want everything to be private. Let's let's make all of Noster private if if you choose to do so. Um, so this is where Jeff G has been looking at you know making this more efficient, being able to encrypt notes to larger numbers of people all at once. You don't have to spam a hundred notes every time you want to send a note to a group of a hundred people. Um, so he he gave a talk about this, the MLS stuff. Um, it basically just creates this crazy tree thing with lots of keys that makes it efficient. I don't really understand it. It's very complicated moon math stuff. I try to not dive too deep unless I'm doing drugs or something. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll get into this soon. But uh, to me, this is, this, we're moving into a direction where if this actually works, where you, can, where you can take a note and you can encrypt it to a group of your friends. So you just say, like, imagine you have a friend group. And, and, and actually, Rabel gave me this when he was on the harassment panel. He had, this, he had this thing that he wanted where he was like, I want to be able to send a private note to, like, a hundred of my followers. And, um, and sure is actually, I was talking to him just, like, <laughs> like, 10 minutes ago or, like, an hour ago, and he was like, this is very similar to the protected, uh, protected accounts on Twitter in some sense, right? I mean, I've never used it, so I don't really know how they work, but um, you want to just share it <laughs> to uh, a group of your followers, and only they can see it. Um, so using this MLS technology, in theory, we could start exploring some of these ideas. And um, so maybe we can leverage MLS, um, which is kind of just an improved signal protocol, um, and, and Nostra notes, just encrypting Nostra notes, to, like, if you want to, use any of the apps you're currently using and just upgrade the notes to encrypted versions um, and have, basically, signal-like privacy properties on Nostra and this could open up in a whole new way that people use Noster. And I so I think the MLS spec was just launched like a, like a week or two ago or something. So this is still very, very new. I basically had to like rewrite my slides like three times when I, was <laughs> when I was preparing for this. But So this is cutting edge stuff. And um, if you're a developer and you, you want to get involved, I think we should, a lot of us should be putting more focus on this because it's really exciting and it's really promising. And I think it's the, the best chance that we have for uh, saving, saving private Noster. Nostrich, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Uh, I just kept it short. If, I want to open up to questions if anyone has any questions related to this. So feel free to sh shoot them to me. Show of hands, and we'll get to... <laughs> Put up your hand. We'll bring a mic over if you've got a question for Will. There's got to be a bunch. That was a pretty cool presentation. It's, all, it's just sinking in. What are we thinking? You can always just come and talk to me afterwards, too. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, hunt him down afterwards. All right. Okay. Thank you, Cheers. Will.